What's up guys, Shuri here, and today we're going to talk about Dragonfire. Its perks are pretty important, so I'll go over them. The first one is you have a fire hazard. This shows you that you do some extra damage. The one that is about half as much damage as your normal shot is the bonus fire damage. So its bonus happens every once in a while, and it is 50% of normal damage. So, this is going to show you that the closer you are, the better you do. That is why in that last clip, I was able to basically do more damage as they got closer. And about at this range is where it's always 255. So, medium range is really what gives you the bonus damage, not necessarily being super close. The next thing is the stem effect of people being close. As you can tell up in the corner, it gave me that little stem effect. And then I use an actual stem gun. It's the same exact looking icon. And if you do it, you basically get the same kind of effect. So that's pretty much all its perks. And I'm going to show you a game that I was playing on this map. Or, you know, all of our favorite uh, game type. But on this map, especially in this spot right here, the dragon fire is so useful because everything's up close. The dragon fire does a ton of damage and it shoots really quickly. And then also the one-shot ability of the CUDA as well. It's all really good and suited for this map. And like I said, especially in this escalators part. Um, one thing you got to be aware of is this is a very good weapon up close and it shoots really fast. But the longer and medium range is not nearly as good for it. So you want to do something like I'm doing here where you're going off to the side and you're kind of just basically playing smart. You're going to not necessarily want to run straight at them. You're going to want to try to come from an angle. And it's better to take that extra time to basically just have awareness around you what's going on and come and get a better shooting angle on them before you start. Um, a lot of people will just rush straight in. With this particular weapon, you want to have more patience. But, like I said, it is very good in this part right here, especially when paired with CUDA, because you can get people low with the CUDA, and you can kill them with the dragon fire, and you're making sure that you take less damage every time you shoot someone, which is unbelievably huge. And that's pretty much what I'm going to show you, is, for this map at least, sitting in the escalator spot is your best bet, and what you want to try to do is hit someone with the snipe immediately, and then pull out your backup weapon and kill them. And this gun is a lot better at the medium to close range, so the closer the better. It can be kind of hard to hit headshots with it unless you're really up close, so I do try to get as close as possible when I'm using the uh, dragon fire. And using cover to be able to get there is the best thing you can do. And anywhere in medium to long range, using a sniper rifle is always your best bet. Just because, like I said, it's only really good up close. It's so funny, that guy hit Undying at the perfect time. It confused me so much, I had no idea why he was still alive. But luckily, I am able to get the good quick scope on the guy at the escalators. And I'm going to just try to stay as far back as possible. You don't want to go all the way back and down here, because then rockets can hit the back wall and kill you. So you kind of want to stay at the bottom of the escalator in just a perfect spot. Because in the top right on the train, they can see you through this crack. And it's really important that you don't let them kill you. Luckily, we do have the spawns down here, and my whole thing is just to make sure that if I see the guy drop the orb, I grab it and use as much of the dragon fire as possible because that's going to give me damage protection, and it's like having an extra stem gun the whole time. And I find that super important. It makes it where you stay alive a lot longer and up close to medium to range. The dragon fire is really good. And then just make sure that you switch out and kill people with your Barracuda when they're longer range. And you can actually do a really good job of killing people with both these guns. And while I do like to use this on stuff like King of the Hill as well, I do find it works the best on things like zone control and orb. Just because of the simple fact that you know exactly where people are going to be, it helps you live a long time and keep the objectives. So my favorite things to do this on are probably zone control and or, but I mean, it really works in anything. The only time it doesn't work that great is in t uh, team deathmatch because, I mean, obviously the longer range guns are going to do better. And special thanks to Oogway, by the way, for uh, helping team up with me while I use these guns that I'm terrible with. Um, that game actually worked out, so I don't feel bad about that one. But there's definitely games that made him lose, so I appreciate it, Oogway. But we were going to play some more uh, Orb, and I hate Orb so much. But the good news is that Dragonfire is really good with Orb. 
Um, you need to try to be aware of where people are coming, um, especially on this map. There's really only two ways they can come, three ways technically if they come through that window, but really only two ways people ever come. And if you're in this corner, the best thing you can do is protect your orb guy, sit in the corner, and do your best. But we have an early lead, and we see that they're trying to change where the orb position is. We're going to go ahead and get some snipes off, and then try to use some dragon fire. Sadly, that guy was kind of at the max range of where my dragon fire works, and it didn't work out. But luckily, we do end up getting the orb guy down, and killing the other guy that's over there. And we're just trying to set up, figure out where they're coming. Are they coming from the right or left? We figure out they're coming from the left side, and so I'm going to back up, kind of waiting for him. That way I can get the jump on him. And as soon as I see him, we start to shoot. We do end up killing the first one, and right as we're about to kill the second one, he pops in dying and hits me with a rocket. Don't ever rocket me. And when you rocket me, don't stand all together like morons with no health, because then I'll just kill your whole team with a rocket. So, life lesson, guys. Don't rocket me. But if you do decide to rocket me, don't stand next to your teammates with no health, because it's not going to work out for you. Ever. And if you're wondering if the only reason this whole orb game was in this video was so I could make fun of those idiots for rocketing me and then standing next to each other, yes, that is why that was in here. Okay, so back to teaching you guys how to do stuff. Um, we're gonna try to do as many one-shots as we can with Kuda, and like I said, Dragonfire has a very short range. It's best in the medium to short range damage-wise, and its protection really only helps you if uh, you're up close to someone. So it is important to make sure that you like basically try to get them to come as close to you as possible. That's why I'm playing a lot in the hill, which I didn't do with something like a juggernaut. And basically get them to come as close to you as possible. Also, right here, I'm looking in between the right and left. And the reason for that is, depending on where they come, I'm going to be able to quick scope. And as you're quick scoping, you should already be moving the cursor towards them. And that's why, as I was scoping, I was moving the cursor towards their head. And that way, it would already be over their head by the time it was ready to shoot. It's something really important that a lot of people need to get used to. It will help you out a ton. That way you can kind of just be ready for them to come from the center or the left or center from right. And basically have no downtime on if you are looking straight center or straight right. Um, it's a really hard skill to get used to, but once you do get used to it, it helps you out so much. And right here, we already have the hill, and I was playing in the middle of the hill for too long, so I wanted to play on the left side. You kind of want to just try to mix things up a little bit, and this side is really close to the hill, so if they do go for the hill, I can always go dragon fire and kill them, but it's also far enough away that like, they're not able to just rush you with rockets or anything. Luckily, we are able to get one away from an unstoppable, so we're going to just try to make sure we get that, but sadly, we're at no health with fire damage on us, so chances of getting an unstoppable are pretty small. Luckily, we do have that one last shot, and we do end up getting it. We get the double kill as well, and then we go for the triple, but I wasn't really sure where the guy was. He ends up shooting my teammate with sunburst and ends up killing me, but it's all good. I was pretty much dead anyways. And right here, we're going to get most of this kill before we even scope, just because this gun does uh, shoot no scope. Um, no scopes with Cooter are actually really fun. Also, let me know if you want to see this solo versus squads that I did. Um, I was trying to do my Dragonfire video and just got unlucky enough to um, play a squad. But it basically is just showing that if you get them low with the dragon fire and knife them, you can do a lot of stuff with it. But if you want to see the solo versus squads, let me know. And when you're running with this gun, you can go in the hill really easily because of the simple fact that you get the damage protection from shooting people up close. So it helps you cap hills super easy because when you're doing damage to people up close, which is really good for this gun, you also are going to protect yourself. So it makes getting hills super easy. And it's one of the favorite things about this gun. But now that you can use things like shotguns as well, it's a little bit less effective. I end up liking to use an assault rifle now more than a shotgun, just because you have the quick ability to switch it, and with Barracuda, you do so much damage for headshots that having an assault rifle that can just quick scope is really, really good, and even no scope. Um, I really think that running an assault rifle is better than running shotguns at this point for backup with CUDA, and I mean, it just makes a lot more sense to me. 
but I get it if you like to run shotguns. It's still a good idea. It's just my biggest thing is I have a trouble manually switching sometimes. And so I like to only really use two weapons if I can. And assault rifles really let me do that. And this one kind of doubles as a shotgun up close. It's basically a poor man's wasp is the way I think of dragon fire. But it also has a lot more range than wasp. So for this in particular purpose, it's better than wasp. Um, but... It just seems to work really well. Uh, I like Dragonfire a lot. But basically what we're going to keep doing is we're going to keep pushing into the middle. This is more of an aggressive backup weapon than something like a Juggernaut or a Bastion. Where you kind of need to have that distance for it to even work. Um, this one's more like a, a Chopper or Survivor where you can go up close. But this one's even more of an aggressive weapon than those. Um, because the simple fact you get protection from shooting people up close... And it does a ton of really good damage up close. I really like to use this gun without scoping a lot. Um, and you do need to basically pay attention with this one a lot. Um, it, and it helps to have a backup weapon. I like to have my shotgun be an Orion, by the way. Uh, just something that I found works the best. I don't bring it out too often. But when I do need to bring it out, it does seem to end up working out pretty good. But like I was saying, it's really good with this gun to no scope. Uh, things like Chopper and Survivor, I tend to scope those a lot. Uh, Juggernaut, I scope it like all the time. But this one ends up working probably better if you don't scope it, um, especially up close. In the medium to long range, you do want to scope it. But this one's one uh, it's most similar to Chopper to where like sometimes it's better to not scope it. Um, I find when you scope this gun, you miss headshots a lot more than if you were to no-scope it. So, hip fire is a pretty big deal with this one. And then, understanding that if you're playing multiple people like this, it's better to just weave in and out with a sniper. I mean, it was one versus four, I was pretty screwed, but because of the fact that I was going back and forth and weaving in and out of the wall, that I was able to one-shot them with snipers and stay alive a lot longer. And that was both times. I mean, really, these guys stayed together so much this whole game, which was really good for my double kills, but not not for much else. <laughs> but luckily, we're actually able to run in and get a lot of damage protection off of our dragon fire, and then start using our sniper to kill people a little bit faster. It's really important to make sure that you go for uh, as many sniper kills on high uh, high health people as possible. And then switch out to dragon fire after that. Just because the simple fact that you're going to get way more kills with your sniper than anything else. And we do end with a four at once throwing knife and then fall into the map. <laughs> yeah. But again, one of the biggest things that you can do with dragon fire is to get that damage protection. Get them low and then start knifing. Even against the top players in the game, you're going to be able to do this every time. It's really good. It helps them get close. And if you kind of sidestep them to the left or right while you're shooting them with the dragon fire, they'll end up missing their knife a lot of the time. And it ends up helping you out a lot. And of course, the one shot ability of the Barracuda making multi kills just super easy. But what makes this gun really good is the ability to go get hills and basically be able to no scope. And go in on people, doing your best job to get them low. And having the protection of Dragonfire just helps so much. Like right there, the only reason I lived was because Dragonfire's protection is kind of like having an extra stem gun. And it is just beautiful. I have loved the fact that I can live long off of it. And it helps you go in, get some kills, stay alive, help your team. And on any objective like zone control, orb, or hill, like Dragonfire is your best friend. And it allows you to run in with confidence like this and not even worry about it. That's why we're able to get the hill, start capping it for our team without really much of a care in the world. We're going to go kill that Orochi guy, which by the way, who names himself You Coward and then plays Orochi like that? Like, screw that guy. We are going to be able to get him most of the way down, and at least the coward stopped using Orochi for a second. But don't worry, guys, he'll go back to using Orochi. <laughs> he is a coward after all. But um, we are going to do our best to end up getting their whole team. For whatever reason, it didn't work out. I, I don't know what happened that whole time, but um, it, it didn't work out too great. Luckily, we do end up getting their triple elimination, but... 
it, it, I don't know. It felt like it should have been a lot more. It's funny because I'm still not sure if things just didn't register properly or what, but it doesn't really matter too much. We end up going and pushing up and then using our dragon fire to give us a stem effect and then switching back to our CUDA to try to get more kills. We kill the first one. We get the second one low, but he ends up popping and dying. So we do have to play a little more careful. For whatever reason, the shots decided not to register at all that game, but it ends up happening sometimes. You can't always choose to have your guns work. <laughs> but what we're doing here is really important, and when you're playing three to four people, it won't be that many, <laughs> you need to make sure that you basically space things out to where you're fighting them once at a time and just having best line of sight possible. That way, even though it's 1v4, or 1v3, you can fight them all separately. That's how I was able to kill all three of those guys and not die, giving our team the win with the elimination streak at the end for a comeback. If I would have died at any point there, given a combo breaker, we would have automatically lost. But instead, I basically played the angles and was able to take them all on 1v3. So that can happen on any map. This one is another one that's really good, is playing over the luggage rack and in the um, bridge. And it works really well with dragon fire, especially because when they do come up to you, you have a stim effect of dragon fire and really good up close kill weapon. We have a guy on our left that we saw. We still don't know where he went, but he stayed into their left building. We do end up killing the guy. It happened a little bit late for some reason. I think it was due to lag, but we do end up getting that six kill. And we just try to move on, keep up the good work, and we get the one-shot CUDA. Gotta be my favorite thing in this game by far. But we're gonna try to do our best to use the rocks to basically stay alive. But we gotta also be aware of our surroundings, make sure no one comes up on the left side. And we kill two. I wanted to get the four at once, but we couldn't. And the guy danced on me, which was kind of weird, because I guess he didn't realize he was losing. But I wanted to make sure that he always remembered dancing on me is a bad idea. And if you're wondering, yes, I really am this petty. So, <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to give him something to dance about, you know. I mean, and by dance about, I mean I wanted to make him really sad inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to try our best to shoot over the luggage rack and kill anyone that comes. I know that I've already killed a bunch of them, so I'm waiting for him to come on the left side. We end up killing him and immediately need to look for the middle and right. I don't see anyone until the very last second. Then I see that there's two on the right. Luckily, we are able to get a lot of the kills with our dragon fire. And then with the last one, that would have been really cool if we could have got that kill. But I screwed up and it didn't work out. So, yes, if you're wondering, am I that petty that I'll do this like this? Yes, yes, I am that petty. So don't dance on me, guys. Wait. Actually, I don't care if you did something. Go for it. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you want to know the perks and how to do the one shot CUDA, part one of this series has it in there. And I have the part five, the final part, which is going to be Bastion, and that will come out as soon as I can make it. And part five with Bastion shows that it's possible to get a 12 at once. Yes, you heard that correct. 12 at once. And insane, all in one multi kill. So I think you'll en I think you'll enjoy Bastion. It's definitely like uh, it was only supposed to be a four part series until I got that with Bastion, and then I was like, okay, I guess we need to do that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It's gonna be fun, and I'll see you around.